Four o'clock in the morning, I wake up. 4.30, 4.45, I'm doing some sort of cardio. Open these garage doors, it's still dark outside. I do this and then I'll have breakfast and then I will go do all my strength and conditioning training at a gym for about an hour. And then I'll go to set. We all average probably about five hours of sleep. It's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside. Look at that, the lights just went out and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's gonna be so good, it's bad. Focus! If you do anything, you never want to do anything half-assed, especially when it comes to your training. Get in, be intense, execute on it, and then get out. For a lot of guys out there, and I was certainly one of those guys in my 20s, I thought I had all the answers. I didn't know shit, by the way. In my 30s, I'm still trying to find myself, as a lot of guys are out there. Hopefully, when you hit your 40s, you're hitting a nice stride. If I'm gonna do it, I need to do this job right. I need to stay focused on it. I need to give the best effort I possibly can. We live down here in South Florida, it's hurricane season. Focus! Well, when it's time to go to the gym, we gotta get to the gym. And there ain't no stopping us. It's like I'm gonna be the baddest motherfucker walking. All right, empty gym, the way we like it. It's Sunday, just finished my warm up. This pain ought to be fun. Focus! I work out twice before everyone wakes up. All right, workout number two. I'm out working all my competition. All right, Saturday afternoon, empty gym, the way we like it. It's leg day, which means it's gonna be sweaty, painful, and fun. Okay. And one of the most important things that I've learned along the way is the value of time. So it's, it's understanding what your skill set is, finding the right place to use those skills, and then going for it. What kind of a story can you tell in one minute? That ability to get myself up in the morning, no matter how tired I was, uh -huh. to push myself through those pain barriers. You know, hard work pays. Continually find more ways to use our time while trying to find more ways to save it. You know, I have the same work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You see, you can't actually save time. You can just find different ways to spend it. So when you say you don't have time to do something, you're really saying that you're using your time for other things. One cool thing about time is that it continues on at the same pace, despite how busy we get. It's this time now, so we must Readjust our comfort zone. See, now it's time to go to a different thought process. But the goal remains the goal until you write it on a piece of paper. Then it becomes a vision. What is the vision? Because the only reason I'm here, the only reason we're here today is because of our yesterday. Everything I've been through has defined who I am right now. So what's the goal? What's the vision? Before anything great is really achieved, your comfort zone must be disturbed. It's the, it's the only way it works. It's the only way it works. If we don't understand what we, what we must take back, we will never grow. Why do you want to work out? What is your goal? The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never gonna end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. You know, I mean, maybe the guy uh, that found gold in California and started the gold rush, but don't count on that. That's the one in a, in a lifetime kind of a situation. So you got to really have a specific goal. And to me, to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe, that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. 
that was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. Now it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time and start thinking about why do you want to work out? What is your goal? And that can't be as crazy as it is. It, it could be, uh, you know, I want to impress girls. If that's your goal, so be it, but it motivates you. It could be that you're emulating a certain, uh, you know, bodybuilder or a certain football player, a certain boxer, whatever it is, have those pictures put all over the wall like I did when I was a kid. I put pictures of Rich Park and of Sonny Liston, of boxers and of Ali and of powerlifters and weightlifters all over my bedroom, uh, you know, uh, wall. So that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. People always came up to me and says, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to, I looked forward to another thousand set, uh, reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. So I was turned on by that. I was excited. I couldn't wait to get to the gym. I remember that when I weighed 245 pounds, and Bob Rafelson, the director of Stay Hungry, said to me that I'm interested in having you come in for a reading and work on your acting and all this because I'm interested in having you in a movie to star with uh, Jeff Bridges and with Sally Fields. I was delighted about that and I was excited and I started pumping up more and more. And then he said, but I don't want you to weigh more than 210 pounds. You want me to be in a movie, but I'm weighing 245 to 46. I say, I just won the Olympia, I say, in 19, which was 1974, and I was really at my biggest. And, uh, but he demanded that, and he says, look, it's very simple. On the day we start shooting, he says, I'm gonna put you on a scale, and if you don't make the 210, you're out, because I have someone else in mind. And I worked on it, I started visualizing myself very clearly as a lean athlete. Because that's the only way I could lose that weight and all of a sudden get interested in running more. Because up until that point I ran like three miles after training or before training or whatever. But now all of a sudden it was five miles, six miles, seven miles, eight miles. And they even ran mini marathons in order to lose the weight. And I did everything with high reps and I was watching my diet, what I eat and all those kind of things. And but the day, the day before, I remember we were in Birmingham, Alabama. The day before I was at the YMCA with Bob Rafelson. He was swimming and I was working out and I was running. There was a track there and I was running. He says, let's step on the scale. And I stepped on the scale and I weighed 209. So it just shows to you what is possible if you visualize exactly what you want to look like. And there was no room for any kind of like, well, I can't get my act together or anything like this because there's only a certain amount of time. But the key thing again is have the clear vision. Have the specific goal of what you want to accomplish because then you never go to the gym and you say, the day I feel down a little bit, I don't know what it is all about. I don't know my life, I'm confused. No, I tell you that I was a perfect example of someone that was not confident at all. I mean, when I was a kid, I was just like any other kid. I had my hangups and problems and all this. But when I joined the weightlifting club and I won my first 
little trophy because they did the best clean jerk. And then we went to another meet and they won another little trophy. I started feeling like somebody. But the bottom line is, everyone can use the same method because I used it in politics, I used it in making money, I used it in everything that I've done in the movie business. When you have one little victory, little victories add up and that is what gives you then ultimately confidence. Well, for me, the most important thing always is to have a deadline. Uh, so uh, when I, for instance, uh, had a competition, and let's say the competition was in the middle of September, and it was now beginning of summer, so there was no more time to screw around. So there was the time now to get uh, going on a diet, to get going with the training, to not slack off at all, because there was a deadline there. The day of the competition, I had to be in the best shape possible. And I knew that uh, if I come to the competition and I lose because I did not schedule my training the proper way, or I didn't have the right frame of mind, or I didn't give everything, literally worked my butt off, I would be just so angry. So I never wanted to be in that situation. So this is why it was very important to pick that time and to say, this is when I have to be in top shape, and then I work towards that. But it's not just with the competition. I mean, it's the same in the movie business. I mean, to me, it was always a big advantage when I said, okay, my movie starts on April 1, and I have now three months, so I have to get really in great shape. So you pick those times. It could also be that you have no movie, and you have no Mr. Olympia, or no Mr. America, no Mr. Universe coming up, or any of those things, but you say to yourself, the summer starts in June. I'm gonna go to the beach in June, and at that time, I want to be in great shape. So that creates an urgency that makes you really start training hard and taking it seriously. Because if you don't have a specific plan, then you wander around. I mean, you can have, as I've told you many times, the best ship or the best plane in the world, but if you don't have a specific goal where you want to go and when you want to get there, you just drift around and you never get anywhere. So this is why it is so important to create that urgency and have a specific time when you want to be in shape. Well, I mean, Look, everyone has a problem with time, but the day is 24 hours and we sleep six. Now, I know there are some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. Well, I say just sleep a little faster because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new, which could easily be that you want to learn a new language or that you want to read as a, you know, a newest resolution, I have to read a book every week, or where you say, I'm going to go and reshape my body. So you're going to go and take this hour out of your schedule and say, I'm going to train an hour every day. So this is for most people a, hu a huge challenge, but it is totally doable, I can tell them, because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country, I mean, I went to school, I was working in construction, I was working out my five hours a day, I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight, I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. And so there I just want to tell people, don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have that. You have time, you make the time. how to stop the laziness and they want to know how to stop the procrastination and you know they have some idea in their head you know some kind of a, a vision of what they want to do but they don't know where to start they don't know where to start it you know they don't know where to start and so they say hey where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. That's it. You, you want to improve? You want to get better? You want to get on a workout program or a clean diet? You want to start a business? You want to write a book or make a movie or build a house or a computer or put together some mobile application? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now.
I had beaten my habit of hitting the snooze button. I couldn't believe it, and I thought, wait a minute, counting backwards? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, the next morning I used it again, and it worked. The next morning I used it again, and it worked. The next morning I used it again, and it worked. And then I started to notice something really interesting. There were moments all day long, all day long, just like that five second moment in bed, where I knew knowledge what I should do. And if I didn't move within five seconds, my brain would step in and talk me out of it. Every human being has a five second window, it might even be shorter for you. You have about a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. It's your job to learn how to move from those ideas that could change everything into acting on them. You have to be the hero of your own story, and you can do that. Ninety percent of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like you're not going to feel perfect every day. got to be those days you push through and they're they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't and so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done write down everything you want to do this is what I want you to do write down what you would like to fix about your life and then just if you're 30 pounds overweight you want to lose 30 pounds do it the right way Go start eating vegetables, monitor your calories, write down what you eat, exercise every day, force yourself to do it. The brain is the general, the troops are the body, and you get up and you do it, and then you get to write it down. Our bodies, for whatever reason, uh, most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. It's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual, the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles in, in terms of like how you feel about life, a lot of those are connected to discomfort. Like discomfort is your friend. It really is. Like discomfort and, uh, and not being happy and content with certain situations in life or certain feelings in life. One of the big problems is sitting down and doing the work. And he labels it like an enemy, he calls it resistance. Mm -hmm. You know, and that you have to sit down, you have to overcome resistance and that the pro goes to work. And it doesn't matter if you're sick, doesn't matter if you have kids, it doesn't matter what you, you're a pro and you go to work. And that, and that just, it puts it in your head that this is what I do. You have pride in that. And then when you are in front of that keyboard and you're, you're, you, got, you look down the count, it's like, put a thousand words in. You, you know, yeah. And you, you, you're doing the work. Yeah. And out of that work, gems blossom. And it's about resistance that people feel when uh, you know you should write or you know you should paint or whatever you should sculpt, whatever these things are that you, you pursue. And that there's this thing that comes up that tries to keep you from doing that, this resistance. You're not a hero in your own eyes. You're not, you're not someone who you respect. You know, you're doing what you got to do to get by, but ultimately, you're not respecting yourself. And I think we all have a certain amount of appreciation and respect for hero figures. You know, like, we all look at, like, the guy who never lies and always does the right thing and fucking helps everybody out. And that's the John Wayne character, you know, that's, that's the, right. the ultimate hero. 
And he's like, this is a battle that you will fight for the rest of your life. But the key is to fight it, not to give in. Don't give in to that resistance. To fight, Just to fight that resistance. And in doing so, every day you do so, you have won the battle for that day. And you will continue to fight that battle. And when you look at your own life and you don't stack up, you're a thief, you stole money from your wife's purse and you know, you, 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 you don't want to smoke cigarettes but you fucking have to, you, you can't deal with the stress you smoke, you devalue yourself, you slowly start devaluing yourself. You, when you look at yourself, you realize that if you were judging yourself, you would judge yourself unfavorably. So no matter who you, you can't pretend you're the, 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 the hero of, of your story. You can be the hero of your own story that woke up today. You can be the hero of your own story that at 40 years of age stopped, got out of bed and said, I'm not doing this anymore. Only by my instincts and only by my morals and my ideals and my mind. And I'm going to be dead honest with myself because I'm realizing this is not going to last forever. And I'm going to get myself in shape and I'm going to eat healthy. And I'm going to do this because this is, this is me now. I decide that this is me. And people have to realize that you are not your past. You are not all oh, the yeah. times you fucked up. You're not all the times you were drunk. That's not you. What you you are the person who's learned from a great deal of experience. When you're alone with your thoughts, you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, of oh. you wanting to be liked by these other people, you can run into a trap and you 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 set up a life that you didn't really want. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. You're trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage, you've got credit card bills, you've got student loans you have to pay, you have a bunch of shit going on that you have to continue to feed. And all that, and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them, oh my goodness. Then you're fully locked in, you can't take any chances whatsoever. And Oftentimes, people make the mistake of getting stuck, and it is just a tactical mistake, just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game, just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you got stuck in the woods. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not going to always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again. And if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again, you've trapped yourself. Because people define themselves by the past. Instead of thinking about who they are now, instead of they, they still look back at a mistake they made and don't just get past that mistake, grow and learn, but dwell on it. I think oh. it defines them. I mean, th there's definitely pitfalls in life. You're going to run into them. We all are. No, you can learn and grow if you survive. Somewhere along the line, they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just got to get up and get shit done. There's sometimes where you have to fucking pull yourself up and you have to push forward even if you want to stay in bed. Having that safety net just provided him with a way to stay in bed. Kept him weak. Have an opportunity. Every time things go wrong, Every time things feel terrible, you have an opportunity to learn from whatever makes you feel terrible and never allow it to happen again. Push forward. The system will set out honeypots for people to get trapped in. The system will set out the ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. They want to set it up so that you stick around. Stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem. To see that issue as it comes up on the map. And no, no, I think this is a right turn. To see all the problems that could 
intentionally lay in front of you and calculate your your future and then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them And most people get stuck in these patterns or they define themselves as a person who doesn't follow through on their ideas or a person who doesn't pursue their real interests and loves. You define yourself by that. Well, you know, I guess when I start things and I quit. No, you don't. No, you have started things and you quit. And it gives you a horrible sense of regret that's made you define yourself by that. You don't have to do that. If I look back on anything I've ever done, mistakes I've ever made, um, paths that I, you know, something that I put out that I didn't quite think, man, maybe I just waited three months before I released that, or maybe I should have, you know, re-edited that blog post a couple more times before I put it online, or the things that I've done have dri driven me crazy, but yelling at someone I didn't have to yell at them for, whatever. But the, the most important thing is always for all people to recognize that you're not who you were a year ago. You're not who you were five years ago. You're not who you were last week. So you got to regulate how much you dwell on regrets of the past. You really no got to be careful. It's also directly proportionate to the amount of hardships that people face in life, their ability to face hardships. You know, and there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit, and then one day something goes wrong. And then look at the people that are, have kind of taken chances and navigated their way. What do they do differently than you? insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not that you step back and you go you know I don't just don't I just don't want to look at myself that closely but the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results